Now, if you're watching this movie... <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Martin with Analog Vibes. We are finally back. And I know that many of you have been waiting like forever uh, for us to come up with this particular project, which is a complete kit, a limited edition of the legendary 176 Varimo limiting amplifier, which Richard Kaplan, who worked with um, Neil Young, The Temptations, um, and Leonard Cohen, just to name a few, referred to as the best sounding limiter ever made by anybody. And it is a real tube mojo machine. But before we dive into the sound and how it works, I have the actual prototype right behind me here. Um, I just wanted to share a quick story about how I actually got into building it in the first place. And as mentioned in the last newsletter, it was actually you, you know, the Analog Vibes community who pushed me to take this on. And I personally had no experience with the 176. And I also had very little information available, you know, compared to the other projects I had done before. You know, like an LA2A, for example, you have like tons of material, you know, forum threads, PCB-based DIY projects and schematics and, you know, whatnot. But for the 176, you know, an old service manual and a handful of photos I scratched from the internet was literally the only things I had to get started. And I still remember, you know, with Eli who helped me trying to piece this chassis together, we took photos we found and we used the view meter um, as, as a reference and we measured everything on screen, you know, based on that. It was so tedious, but eventually we got it and uh, surprisingly we came very close to the original, which was later confirmed by a community member who actually owns an original one. Now, in terms of electronics, it was also a huge challenge because we had to recreate the original PCBs with fork turrets and everything. And while building it, there was pretty much no one we could consult. So um, I just had to follow the original schematics and the diagrams of the original PCBs and that was it. And of course, it didn't work from the spot. So I really had to get my head around how this thing works, you know. And uh, which now in retrospective was uh, an invaluable experience, of course. I even found a couple of mistakes in the schematics. I'm not sure if they were intentional as some kind of protection, um, but after finding them, fixing them, I got it working. And this very moment, you know, I still remember it as if it was yesterday when I switched on the very first brand new 176 being made in over 60 years, you know, <laughs> it's very hard to put in words, you know, and I literally had no clue what to expect, you know, with an LA2A or 1176 or a Pultic, you kind of have an idea, you know, even if you don't have an original one available, you know, maybe just by using the plugin, you kind of have an idea of, you know, the, the, the sound signature and the character, the thing, but with a 176, I had absolutely no clue. And, you know, I switched it on, I put some sound through it and I was blown away, you know, and yeah, it was literally like a divine moment, you know, I never had heard anything like it before. I was so excited. I just put out my phone, you know, and tried to capture it on my phone the very moment and I got to show it to you. I know it's only crappy phone quality, but I think it still captures some of the magic that was actually going on right there. You know, I know it might sound weird, but maybe you can relate. Right after that, I called one of my closest engineer nerd friends. And I was like, you know what? I just built a 176 limiting amplifier from scratch and it works. And he was like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, no man, you gotta come over and check it out. It sounds amazing. I was so excited. That guy is weird. Anyway, you know, it was a huge challenge for me to build this first unit from scratch, but it kind of, you know, paved the way to make this project or to make the 176 
available again you know again if you think of an la2a you know there's several options you know you can get one of these reissues chances are if you put out enough money and a little patience you might even be able to find a vintage one and if you don't hear the difference between one of these cheaper clones and the real one you might even be happy with one of these clones you know but for the 176 there's pretty much no real option other than maybe uh, going with a retro 176 which in my opinion has a much more modern sound signature um, but finding a vintage one is close to impossible because there just weren't that many units made you know and and those who own an original one will most likely not give it away unless their life depends on it no no i still remember in putting together the first initial kit people like leor goldenberg who's worked with uh the stone temple pilots alanis morissette uh ziggy marley marilyn manson um if you see this leor shout out to you um he hit me up letting me know that he had been looking for an original 176 like forever and couldn't find one until we came up with the kit and uh, this first kit only had the chassis and the chassis related parts, uh, the turret boards, the PCBs uh, and a wiring diagram, but it closed a huge gap. And uh, ever since we wanted to do uh, another run, but uh, after pulling off our first all-inclusive complete kit of the tube program equalizer back in 2020, we figured why not taking this to the next level and, you know, uh, putting together a complete kit for the 176. Because it's fucking nuts, that's why. The past few years actually have given us plenty of reasons why not. You know, this project just turned out to be so much more complex than we had expected. Um, we delayed it so much that some of you were already joking about that coming soon tag on the website. And I can fully understand, but it just has been such a tremendous challenge, like literally the most challenging project to date by far. But I'm gonna tell you more about this challenge and the journey, you know, in the next video. Let's plug this thing in and put some sound for it. So what I'm gonna do, I use the input control to drive the signal against the threshold. For this one, we use a ratio of four to one. It's an upright bass, Samuel with the analog vibes crew recorded recently. First of all, the dry bass signal, and then I bring in the 176, all right? All right, let's bring it in. be off here. Adjust the output levels. Wow, it's incredible how we're taking off more than 7 dB and still doesn't sound overly compressed. Quite the opposite actually, it sounds very alive. Now let's try it on nylon guitar. From this one I use a ratio of 12 to 1 for a higher threshold and Let's make the release time a little faster. Again, I bring in the clean signal first and then let's hear the 176. Let's bring it on. Wow, it's also amazing how the 176 treats the train engines of this guitar. <laughs> Incredible. Let's check it out on backing vocals. 
This is my very, very good friend and long-time soul brother Jan singing backup vocals. For this one we use a ratio of 8 to 1 and we make the release a little slower. Again, first the clean signal and then we bring in the 176. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is, it's time. Let's bring it in. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is, it's time. We're taking off 10 dB, guys. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. Wow. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. What it is, what it is, what it is, what it is, it's time. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. Yeah, like adding another dimension. What it is, what it is, what it is, as a brother, it's time. In my humble opinion, it's not only one of the best sonic compressors out there, but also one of the most beautiful ones. Like, you know, this design literally offers everything you can wish for as a gear nerd, you know, when thinking of a real Mojo machine. Um, the viewmeter, by the way, I used for this prototype uh, was mostly used for the 175B and only in a very few of the early 176 models. The one that we will use for the kit will uh, visually resemble the one that was more commonly used in the 176 and we got SciFam in the UK to custom make them for us for our kit. But more on this in the next video. To give you a better feel for it, this time we uploaded the samples to the website so you can just download them right here on the Build Your Legend series page and listen to them through your studio monitors for better judgment, all right? Now, for those new to the game, Analog Vibes is not just about reviving legendary pieces of vintage studio gear, it's also about empowering you to build them yourself. And uh, many of you have been longtime members of this amazing community. You experienced firsthand what it's like. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the technical challenges during the build process, but more importantly, um, the profound impact it will have on your sense of self and accomplishment. You know, those of you who have been longtime members know exactly what I'm talking about. For anyone new to this, <laughs> I just want to say, you know, building a high-end legendary piece of gear you have always dreamed of you know with your own two hands and then using it to create your own music there is nothing like it you know and you just have to be prepared you know because it will have a profound impact and uh, i know i've been repeating myself because i already mentioned in the past but i've seen people doing really crazy things after accomplishing it look what i have created i have made fire If you're watching this video thinking like, am I really able to pull this off? Or thinking like, man, I'd love to try this, but it seems so difficult. I can tell you from my personal experience, because when I started, I had no clue about electronics, that the biggest barrier was always in my head, you know, and it was never as hard as I expected. You know, it was mostly about to, to get started, you know, with a little guidance and that's why I started doing analog vibes, you know, because this is not the first time we're doing this. We've been running this Build the Legend series for quite a couple of years now. A few years back, it was the Tube Program Equalizer Complete Kit, which was a faithful recreation of the legendary Pultec EQP1A. And last year, it was um, the limited edition Silver Face Tube Opto Compressor, which was essentially a very faithful recreation of the 1967 Silverface LA-2A and this year it's the 176 limiting amplifier. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that through all these years I gathered so much information about the concerns and the needs and also from my personal point of perspective uh, which helped me to put together a very helpful guide to address any concerns you might have in regards to DIY projects. It's called No More Concerns and it covers all the basics like soldering tutorials, handling high voltages, uh, precautions, components. And since I realized that for many of you troubleshooting or the need to troubleshoot a unit seems like the ultimate nightmare. Please, no troubleshooting. I'll do whatever you want, but no troubleshooting. 
shoot the thing. Ah, 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 ah. I also included troubleshooting in the guide. So if you are new to the game, I highly recommend downloading this e-paper. You can find it right next to this video if you are on a website. If you watch this on YouTube, head over to analoglives.com and grab it from the Build the Legend series page. I'll put the link in the description below. And I even made a video on it in the past, I remember. I put it somewhere next to this video as well and also leave the link in the description below. Um, if you're new to this, I highly recommend it, all right? So um, this was part one of two more videos to come. In the next episode, uh, I will take a closer look at how the 176 actually works, how it does its magic and what is so special about it. We'll talk about how much this thing is gonna cost to build. And uh, we could also talk about potential modifications we could include if you want to. Just let me know in the comments. And um, what I also like to know is, is there anybody who has uh, um, like real experience with a vintage 176? If so, what are your opinions? And if not, what are your first impressions um, after watching this video or maybe after listening to the samples? And um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to know, you know, other than uh, the, the things I announced for the upcoming video? Just let me know in the comments, all right? Um, yeah, one last thing though. If you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet and you don't want to miss anything related to the 176 kit, now is the perfect time to do so, all right? Next video will be coming up next week. And yeah, I'll catch you then, all right? Peace.